local teacher charged for a federal sex crime. Details coming up. Years after this historic Pacific Beach home was purchased and fixed up, neighbors say it's falling apart once again. I'm working for you on that story coming up. We revisit the Cedar Fire, a day when my wife Heather and photojournalist Scott Hall were on the front lines and at one point had to run coming up in the Zevelin Zone. Feel good Friday. I'll take you to the Halloween baby parade at Sharp Chula Vista and introduce you to this little pumpkin. And a special screening of an 80s horror movie filmed right here in San Diego. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A University City High School teacher accused of trying to pay for sex with a teenager is in jail tonight because authorities believe he's a flight risk. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. 58 year old Sean Stevenson was arrested earlier this week by the San Diego Human Trafficking Task Force. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes joins us now live from the federal courthouse with more. Kirsten. I'm holding in my hand a copy of the criminal complaint against Sean Stevenson. It details how the science teacher messaged an undercover police officer several times trying to pay for sex with an underage girl. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Sean Stevenson, a high school science teacher at University City High School, had been messaging the undercover officer who was posing as a pimp from a cell phone. Although Stevenson is a teacher at University City High School, none of the allegations in the criminal complaint involve any students or the school. The complaint says Stevenson negotiated a price of $140 for oral sex. The undercover officer he was dealing with said they had an underage cousin who, according to the complaint, needed the money but was only 16 years old. Stevenson responded yes. On another occasion, the messages from Stevenson to the undercover officer show Stevenson asked for a, quote, younger girl and is informed of the 16-year-old's age. Stevenson responds that he is, quote, very interested. On October 23rd, the complaint says Stevenson requests to meet for a car date in an area known for prostitution for a sex date with the 16-year-old and negotiated a price of $140. The complaint goes on to say around 7 a.m. the morning of October 24th, officers saw Stevenson drive to the meetup location. Officers stopped him and found $140 cash in the car and the cell phone to which the undercover officer had been texting beneath the driver's seat of Stevenson's car. John Stevenson is behind bars right now because officials have deemed him a flight risk. He was arraigned earlier this week and his next court date is set for Tuesday, October 31st. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Pretty explicit and shocking allegations here, Kirsten. What do our viewers need to know going forward in this case? Okay, so the U.S. Attorney's Office says that anyone with additional information about this case, you are asked to call the San Diego Crime Stoppers or the National Human Trafficking Hotline. All right, Kirsten Holmes with the latest. Thanks, Kirsten. Breaking news out of Del Cerro right now. A SWAT standoff at a day's end. This is video from a little bit earlier. It's been going on since early this afternoon. It's on Adobe Falls Road just off Interstate 8. San Diego police say a man has locked himself in a room and had refused to keep paying for that room and also threatened staff with a knife. He's also accused of threatening to shoot officers. The motel has been evacuated. Crisis negotiators are on the scene. We'll bring you any new information as we get it. San Isidro High School basketball star Mikey Williams is facing three more felony charges tonight. Williams appeared in court earlier today. The new charges are connected to an alleged additional victim and accusations of threats to witnesses. That's all on top of six other previous charges. Prosecutors say the University of Memphis basketball recruit fired a gun at a car carrying five people back in April. No one was hurt. Today, the judge denied a request to raise Williams bail. A trial date is set for December 14th. If convicted, Williams could face up to 30 years in prison. There are new developments tonight in the sexual misconduct case against former San Diego County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher. Former MTS employee Grecia Figueroa is suing Fletcher, accusing him of sexual harassment and assault. Fletcher denies the allegations. 
During today's hearing, a judge gave Figueroa seven days to turn over all correspondence between her and Fletcher, including all texts and social media exchanges. Fletcher's attorneys say, including all the materials will prove the interactions were consensual. If Figueroa does not follow the judge's order, she'll face a $4,000 fine. People living in Pacific Beach say a historic home that was recently refurbished is once again in disrepair. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is working for you to get details, including from the owner himself. This home on Grand and Jewel made headlines back in 2020 when it was sold for close to $1 million. A lot of work was put into fixing it up, but people around here tell me over the past few months, it's been falling apart. I just think it's sad that the owner has just given up. Or so it seems. Or so it seems, yes. Stephanie Brown walks by this historic home daily. Over time, she's seen it change, saying all the work that recently went into refurbishing it appears to be slowly chipping away. It's just sitting here and it's sad and it's dilapidated again and the weeds are overgrown and there's a window busted and there's vagrants living in the back house to the point where they have potted plants on the porch now. We first told you about this home in 2020 when it was put on the market for $1 million. Everyone so. in PV knows this house. Built in 1906, it was one of the first homes in Pacific Beach, but over the last several decades, it hadn't been properly cared for and turned into an eyesore. A developer purchased the property and spent another $250,000 fixing it up. In 2021, he gave us a tour showing off the final product. All the doors still is original, even the handles. At the time, Ramin Karimi said he planned to make the house an Airbnb and possibly at a coffee shop on the property. But Stephanie says she hasn't seen anyone in the house for months. Everyone always has questions about this house. So he did some research and discovered the home was put back on the market in 2022 for $1.65 million. It was taken off and listed again for $1.795 million last month, but withdrawn again. Today, I call Ramin, who told me while the back lot can be used to develop up to three units, the home itself is designated as historic, so it can't be torn down. Plus, there are certain guidelines that must be followed. Because of this, selling it has been difficult. So I asked Ramin what's next. He says plans are underway to lease a home to a family, which could happen within days. As for concerns, he's let the property go. He says that's not the case, telling me he's put up fencing to try and keep people out and does intend to repair the back unit in the near future something Stephanie is hopeful for. The residents who live in PB who love history really want to see it restored and beautiful again. Working for you, I'm Shannon Handy for CBS 8. Thanks, Shannon. Here at CBS 8, we want to help solve problems affecting you or your community. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Still ahead tonight, our Verify team investigates whether a warning most of us have heard is really an urban legend. And getting into the holiday spirit at an early age where these babies were decked out and kids in tiny costumes today. Lots of sunshine in the forecast for this weekend. We're also talking about temperatures that are going to be on the rise. Second half of the weekend with a northeast breeze picking up. Let's take a look at your complete forecast. Ahead. We revisit the Cedar Fire, a day when my wife Heather and photojournalist Scott Hall were on the front lines and at one point had to run coming up in the Zeppelin zone.